Hey everybody, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and we are doing another episode of our Iron Trap podcast slash video interview, whatever we're going to call it. Still don't know. And we are with uh, Harad Jen, conveniently enough, um, because she was painting the big red truck, which everybody's uh, been asking us if we were going to do that. So super excited. Jen is probably busier than we are, so this is a convenient time to get both of us sitting in one place. And uh, I know people are always asking questions on your socials, so I thought it'd be good to cover some of that stuff and also uh, kind of put the word out about what you're, everything you're doing. So can you give a little uh, kind of like origin story, your background, your name, your, what you do for anybody that's not familiar? So uh, I got my name, Hot Rod Jen, uh, hanging out in a, in a bar underage um, <laughs> <laughs> before pinstriping. But anyway, um, I got into pinstriping around the same time and I slowly learned lettering and then gold leafing and now airbrushing and it just keeps on progressing. It's like never stop uh, learning and I love it. I do it full time. I've been full time for a little over 10 years, but I've been wow. painting for around 20. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's been a long, fun, awesome journey, something different almost every day. And that's what I find pretty much the most interesting part of my job. That's cool. So how young, because I'd like, uh, I think you're youthful looking. So people might watching might have no idea how <laughs> your age, how young were you when you started? I started when I was 19. Wow. Yeah. That's killer. And you were, would you say that you were kind of it, predominantly, it was a you know male dominated world for the most Absolutely. part? Absolutely. And it still is, especially in the pinstriping realm of things. There's a lot of women sign painters. There, there has been, I feel like there was more women sign painters even in the 70s and the 80s than there were female, just full-time mm -hmm. pinstripers. But now there's a lot of women sign painters and muralists, which is amazing, but there's not a lot of full-time straight on uh, female pinstripers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have noticed, I feel like you probably are a big part of that. A lot of more, more gals getting into mm -hmm. doing pinstriping and things yeah. like that. I feel like you've, I, at least from my point of view, I think you being on social media and doing so much and traveling, mm -hmm. it's probably kind of like the gateway other Yeah, people, you, it, know. you know, it can be done. You know, there's no walls stopping yeah. anyone from getting into this art form. And it's ve it's been very inviting between the car community, of mm -hmm. course, and then uh, my fellow pinstripers and sign painters, they've all been welcoming. So it's really nice to get into. And I've, I encourage women and girls to get into it. And, you know, there's a lot more women getting into male dominated fields these days. I see it in the car industry. I see it in mm -hmm. the welding industry and electric, um, electrical industry. And I think it's amazing. Yeah. It's like, even just on social, like how many talented female painters mm -hmm. I see now that you're like, you see all these social media accounts and it's like the, these, um, female painters that are like blowing yeah. most people out of the water. They're it's amazing. Incredible. So I think that's, that's super cool. I agree with mm -hmm. that. So, was there something that made you, well, actually, I should take a step back. So were you always artistic, like before the sign painting and the pinstriping side of it? Were you mm -hmm. like, even in the elementary school or high school, were you doing yeah, that? Yeah, I've been doing art since, you know, probably before I can remember. I love art. I've always loved art. And uh, I focused a lot on photorealism when I was younger, like mm -hmm. middle school into high school, all of high school was photorealism. And it was all geared towards automotive stuff it was it was everything automotive anything um under the sun automotive i wanted to draw or paint and then um then right after high school i, I found the pinstriping and i fell in love with it so was the uh was fat like family background car family yes i'm a fourth generation gearhead yeah it's pretty neat my dad had cars you know i grew up with a 67 chevelle i helped wrench with him on that uh since i was little my uncle had like a chopped mercury when I was young and sure. he was, a, you know, he pinstriped it himself and he was a graphic artist. And then my grandpa had hot rod Lincolns and stuff like that. And then my great grandpa raced um, back in the teens, like uh, Mercer's in New Jersey. Oh, that's killer. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So you were kind of destined to yeah. stay, to be in this industry. Yeah, One of the three kids had to be, be <laughs> a gearhead in it. 
happened to be me. So. That's so cool. So one of the questions we ask in, a, in these interviews, and, and for you, it's actually kind of a fascinating one. We call it the switch. So for collecting or like for whatever, mm -hmm. was there something or a moment or a person or something that made you go like what I call like from just casually maybe somebody that just pinstripes for fun to somebody like you wanted to just obsess over learning and going all in on it? Was there like an event you went to or a person you saw or? It was the lack of. Um, oh. I was striping for on and off for a while learning and practicing and then doing it for fun as a hobby. And then around 2009, I kind of put it on the back burner. I didn't give allow myself a lot of time to uh, mess around with it. And the end of 2009, I realized I'm like, man, why was I so not happy? Like I'm generally like a happy person. Right. And uh, I was like, why, is, why was I like in a bad mood all year? And I like really pegged it as I did not pinstripe a lot, you know? And then that, that was like the, the light bulb going off. I was like, this is what I need to do. Hmm. So then like, then I really took it seriously and I really, really practiced and really got OCD about everything I do. <laughs> so, and then, uh, and then just a few years later, I went full time with it. That's cool. From that moment. Was there like, even when you first started just dabbling in pinstriping mm -hmm. as a hobby, if you will, was there something that made you want to start doing that versus oh, yeah. photorealism was there a time or a person it was just a conversation i was having at a car show after i was showing my artwork at the old hot rod hoedown mm, show yeah, and yeah. um one of my friends we were hanging out in the parking lot and they're like oh you should try pinstriping and i never thought of it really ever before it's always around me seeing it on cars and stuff and i always appreciated i had no idea how it how it was done who did it or anything like that and um when he said that I should try pinstriping. I was like, yeah, I should. And then uh, a pinstriper, Anthony White, who I didn't know at the time, uh, overheard that. And he turned to me, he's like, are you the chick that draws cars? I'm like, yeah, hmm. like, I guess so. Yes, I do. And uh, he said, hold on a minute. And he went into his kit and he brought back a little coral can of one shot. And uh, I never would have thought like one little thing can like change the course of a life, but it totally did. And um, wow. Yeah, I don't think if if he was there in earshot or that person didn't suggest pinstriping, I don't know if I would be here today. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's the switch. There's that's, a, every, yeah. every person there's like that moment that's you know we call it the switch, but for you it's like a you know it's a series of events that mm -hmm. made it. That's super cool. And that's and then it just totally changed. Like I wanted to be a tattooist. I was a full time florist at the time, and I was working on a portfolio to like go, you know, talk to some tattoo shops and, and that little thing. I was like, Oh yeah, this is cool. And it's like better. Cause you don't have to tattoo any so many people. You yeah. Have to. <laughs> I don't have to touch any body parts. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, getting into we, so some of this, we talk about key items in your collection. So for you, I'm going to switch a little bit like in your kit, mm. cause you have an impressive, like when you came and opened your trunk, I was like, wow, that was... <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. I expected a lot, you know, yeah. but like, so is there some key items in your kit wherever you go that you, you can't live without, You've, whether you go on the road or whatever? Is there some key things that you, you know, that are so important? Screwdriver. Do you remember this from the video we shot oh, in yeah. the past? So... This is probably my most used tool, which is just a simple <laughs> screwdriver. I've had it for about 20 years. And it's funny because just, I think this year I found out that uh, I always thought it was my dad's. I always thought I stole it from my dad. Right. No big deal, you know, like yeah. tools are shareable in my yeah, house yeah. or were. <laughs> so, so I cleaned it off one day and I looked and it has an engraving uh, GKS on it. And that's not my dad's initials. Hmm. They're my uncles. And I was like, oh, crap. I stole Uncle Glenn's screwdriver. <laughs> I was like, I'm not giving it back. Is he the one that was pinstriping? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I was like, I'm keeping it. Yeah. that's So I use this for opening cans, closing cans, stirring my paint, taking my paint out of the cans. Like it's, I use it for a lot of stuff. Um, oh, my goodness. Like are there a certain, br like I know you have a lot of brushes. Is yeah. there a handful of brushes or, and I'm sure you get, these are like the questions I see from watching your social, yeah. like brushes. Is there mm -hmm. a certain handful of brushes that are like 
gotta have. Yeah, absolutely. So after learning, like you go through an arsenal of brushes and they're so preference to the user. And I'm finally like down to, I know exactly what I need to buy because I like it and I know what to use all the time now. And for pinstriping, I use the King 13, made my back. Also by Mac, I use a lettering quill called the 189. Beautiful hair for lettering. And then I also use French Masters, which is another brand of uh, brushes. And that I use the 3173s for lettering. And then of course the Mac Virus, which is like my little detail brush. Man, like I can do a whole hair like car portrait like this size, you know, like a photorealism car thing just with that one brush alone. And wow. I can do like most of my artwork that I do, not just vehicles. Most of all my artwork is either like both the King 13 and the Mac Virus and that's it. Mm. But yeah, it's it's really neat. So those brushes are like my absolute like I'd be lost without them for yeah. sure. So those are definitely keys. Oh, and... yeah. Yeah. You can pretty much do most of your what you do with those. Absolutely. And even like, a, you know, if I'm using a number eight, which is a pretty decent sized brush, like I can letter stuff that's like that big, you know, like I'm able to mm. manipulate the tip of that brush to do something really tiny. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one thing for mm -hmm. sure. Is there, um, I can't say paints because you have so many different. I have different paints. Yeah. And like, I, there's some people that are very brand loyal to like one paint or the other. And I'm like, I spread the love. I, I really pick the paint that I think is best for the, you know, any job that comes my way, I might be like, oh, well, enamel would be good on that or urethanes would be good on that. And also like if I'm painting like wood signs or like outside murals, mm -hmm. then I'm using different types of paint. I'm using like latex. So it all depends on the job at hand and also the colors because um, certain brands or certain types of paint, like enamel, like metallics don't really last long. Mm -hmm. So then I know to use the urethane if my customer wants a me metallic. Oh, okay. So that's why I have an array Makes of paints. Sense. Yeah. And you don't know what you're gonna get into sometimes. Exactly. And yeah. like I was doing gold leaf, like I knew I wanted to use urethanes on this because I know it's gonna be outside, you're gonna be traveling mm -hmm. the country with it eventually. Yep. So. I really wanted to use my urethanes, which is one set of paint, but then for the gold leaf, I always tint it with an enamel because the size is an oil-based size, so I need an oil-based color tint to tint mm. it. So that's why I have the two. So it really is like your science kit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, then like different thinners for, you know, if it was, you know, more humid or less humid and, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff comes in play. So is there anything else? Your, your little seat was crucial. Yes, I noticed that. yes. Yeah. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but this seat is amazing. It's uh, it's called a tornado seat, and every single little rung it adjusts to the height. And I never know. Like some days I'm working on a drag car where it's on the floor, or you know, some days I like almost had it all the full full way up doing doing this door. I do not stand on it, but mm -hmm. I do sit on it, and it's so nice to be yeah. able to adjust the height just like perfectly to what I'm working and on. And you just have one one thing instead of have a bunch of stools. Exactly. Or, you know, yeah, and it adjusts the height, and it folds down and it fits in my kit. So that's really Oh handy. yeah, that's true. It gets like basically almost flat. Yeah, it's, it gets that high. And another thing I always carry with me, cause again, like I'm mostly a mobile painter. Mm -hmm. So I never know what the lighting is like. So uh -huh. I bring, it's in behind the truck right now. I bring like a light with me and it has like different adjustable for like brightness mm -hmm. and everything like that. So I bring that with me. Like there's some garages where, you know, I, I always ask like, do you have electric and do you have a bathroom? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, one garage didn't even have electric. So I had to run, like I bring an extension cord with me and I had to run an extension cord to it from his house into the garage. Oh, no. And it was like dark as dark can be. And I had to do the dash of like a Model A. So I was like, oh great. And it was a coupe, so it wasn't even a roadster. So it was like, like really already like, dark yeah, inside. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. But yeah, these are the things that when you're a mobile painter, you really got to like plan for the worst. You know, I can imagine and hope it. for the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why, like, I felt like when you came here, like a week or two ahead of time, like, right, what do we need to do? We got to get this cleared out, move yeah. stuff around, and you know, and I, and I, I like you. Te you texted me and asked about because it's so hot this week. You're yeah. like, how hot's it gonna be? Yeah. So Steve and I were talking about like whatever we do this week when Jen's here, we got to keep the doors down and not let the heat in. So yeah. I, I can't imagine that. That's probably got to be the hardest thing is the traveling. You know, because like you were saying with the thinners and, yeah. and everything with one guy's garage is damp and cool and, in a, you know, or air conditioned. Yeah. And, so. and I'd like this, well, I don't know, it was last winter or the winter before. 
I told the guy I, was, I had to do like an RV or something. I was like, and it was winter, so it was like 28 degrees outside. Ooh, yeah. And I said to him, I was like, oh, because it's RV, you know, RV storage is usually not heated. Mm -hmm. So I said to him, I was like, I just need a heated garage. Like, even if it's 60, I'm happy. Like, I can paint. Right. And he's like, yeah, 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 it's a heated garage. It wasn't a heated garage. It was a heated office. The RV did not fit in the office. So, like, it's out in the storage area. And it is, like, I think it was, like, 40 degrees in there. And I, I carry a snowsuit in my car with me <laughs> <laughs> and snow boots. So I was like, oh, great, here we go. So, mm. like, I geared up. I, like, taped hot hands on me, and I just painted it. And you did it. I did it. I oh, did the job. Oh, I would have told him, wait yeah. till spring. I was like... Got it done and out of there. Yeah. Jeez. So again, like, you never know. Wow. Well, you're more polite than I would have been. Yeah. I'd be like, nah, sorry, this yeah. is not, not heated. So do you have that? That kind of gets into. Do you have like your, um, like, well, I should two questions here. Number one, your like favorite. Is there? Do you have a? That's probably hard to pick. Top three or top five favorite things that you've painted over mm. the years and it doesn't have to be necessarily the biggest yeah may, maybe even just sentimental wise too like is there anything That's really hard i'm one of those people like i really enjoy what i do and i love yeah, yeah mostly everything that i do everyone's like oh i don't like my work i'm like man i'm so impressed i'm like i did that you know i'm yeah. like because you're always growing yeah. but um i really enjoyed um oh geez Catch me on the spot. I did this panel, and it was years ago, so it's mm. kind of like not even like my most prettiest work, but it was most like it was definitely emotional for me to let mm -hmm. it go, and I didn't think I was gonna be emotional until I let it go. Oh, okay. And it was like this crazy like nine color panel I did for a charity auction up in Milwaukee, the Pinstripe Legends, and um, I did this like top fuel fuely mask with like the helmet and variegated leaf with like flames coming out, like riding up the the panel. It was like really really cool. And um, as soon as it went on, like on the auction, I like started crying. And I was never felt like that emotional, like, like compelled to a piece before. And it's been the background, like my screensaver, my cell phone for over eight years now because of that. You know, I'm like, man, the piece that got away. It was just so cool. It was so cool. So I love that one. I really liked what I did with the Volkswagen uh, bus for Del Ponte's in uh, New Jersey with Rob Ida. Mm -hmm. It was such like a classic sign logo on the side of that bus i really love that and man there's been there's i, I know it's that. hard to pick some I, it is I, just, hard. I didn't know if there was any over the years that stood out even just yeah. as you know sometimes it's the connection or the person you did it for mm -hmm. or the interesting yeah you know, that way and then like one of the other pieces that i did it's actually at the pretty sure it's still at the kkoa museum and um, that was the piece that was hanging in the Butler Fine Art Museum. It was like this big showcase of pinstripe artists, American pinstripe artists in an American Fine Art Museum, which is Huge. crazy. Yeah. I mean, they had a Van Gogh and a Rockwell in the museum. It was like, ha, I yeah. was like, that's so cool. But it was like a big, like 32 inch panel by 24 inches. And I used like three different types of gold leaf on it, pinstriped it, shadowed it. I sprayed the background and every, like everything. Like I went full tilt boogie on that piece and I really, really enjoy it. And now I'm like, I kind of want it back. It's yeah. been on tour. So that one, that one is really, really special too. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's kind of neat because some of the stuff you're saying isn't necessarily, people would maybe think it's like, oh, this car or that, yeah. but some of it's the, you yeah. know, the one-off pieces like that. I do a lot of great work on vehicles. And it's funny because like a lot of people to see my pinstripe and they're like, I want pinstripe in my car, but... They're like, that's too much. I'm like, oh, I get it. You know, like yeah. I'm very, like when it comes to vehicles, I'm, I'm a car chick before I was a pinstriper, you right. know? So I understand certain cars can go like crazy or like they don't need it or mm -hmm. just a little bit. So I understand. And I usually talk to my customers about that, about what they're looking for. But like my artwork, like my panels, that's like my full expression. Like I get cool. my heart on, my heart is out on it, you know? Right. And so I really like and I like doing that because my artist self mm -hmm. gets to be released that way. Yeah, and you can just let the piece evolve as you're doing it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And that um, the little side comment that as far as art pieces go, the that seems to have taken off on your um, with doing the pinstriping of like 
like you, for us, Kate and I have the Nosferatu mm -hmm. that you did, but also you've been doing like animals and different stuff. Like how did that idea, like did you, were you just one day like, I wonder if I could do a face or something? Or... Yeah, I think, I think the first one I might have done was like a pit bull. Okay. You know, and it's one of those things like, it was probably around like 2011, I started, I, I was actually looking at a building, like an Art Deco building, and uh, actually like locked up the brakes on my, my old Nova. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, that's such a cool building. And I and you know, I got out and I started taking pictures of the car. And I'm, as I was looking at it, it dawned on me like, maybe I can incorporate other forms of art into my art, mm. whether that be Art Deco, like shapes, you know? Like mm. if you think about it, all pinstriping is, is lines and if, you can create a shape out of those lines, then you can pretty much create any image. Yeah. So uh, I started doing that more, and then like the dogs, they took off. People loved them, yeah. and slowly I got better, you know, as I went on. And now I did like the the horror movie monsters were mm. huge. Yeah. That's... Creature of the Black Lagoon and Frankenstein. I'm so happy about the Nosferatu because he's the first vampire on you know screen. Yeah. So that was cool, and um. Yeah, I've done some other ones, and it's fun. I just, the hop-up asked me to do a rabbit for them. I was like, absolutely. Yeah. So that was fun. That's cool. So do you, do you still have some, I should know this, but do you still have some prints of some of those available? Yeah, yeah. all the ones that I have available. I have the movie monsters, the universal horror movie monsters, mm -hmm. and then um, I recreated Frank with the Bride and Frankenstein, so like their colorways can match and yep. be hung up together. So I have those available, and then I have, um, I don't know if I should say this on screen, but I have the Star Wars stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah, don't come at me. But, um, <laughs> no, it's an yeah, arti like, artistic rendition. Yes, I think it's that's, fan art. Yeah. Um, so I have Vader and um, Chewie nice. and R2-D2 and Yoda. So, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah I think that's like probably brings a whole new audience in that maybe yes. isn't car people, but it's a you know, the art side of it, like, oh, that's cool. Absolutely, and the kids love them. Oh, I bet. They're like, they're like, oh, that's so-and-so, and they know exactly who they are, and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. To... And they they get involved, and whenever, like, it was funny, when I when I was doing a show and I saw a kid wearing, like, a Vader shirt, I was like, you are getting a print, you know, <laughs> like, for free, here you go. I was yeah. like, that's so cool. So that's fun to be able to interact with kids like that. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I didn't think of that side of it, but yeah. I could see the animal thing taking off because it's like people want, uh, do you get people asking for my dog yes. or my cat all the time? Yeah, or? a lot, and I love it because I'm like, hey, if I can get paid for looking at someone's dog <laughs> for like a few hours <laughs> and create them into pinstripes, I'm like, I'm winning, that's you super know, cool. and I love animals. So that's, that's awesome to be able to do that. Yeah, that's really mm -hmm. cool. Now, do you have, um, as far as things you've pinstriped or lettered or, or, you know, the gold leaf, um, anything that's probably like, I guess, most, I guess, most famous, you could say, I don't like saying it that way. Like, mm -hmm. I know you've done a lot of like, drag cars and mm -hmm. different stuff but is there anything that's like like you were like wow i'm doing you know because it's historic or it's whatever the tuckers oh, for yeah. rob ida i've done um and it's not pinstriping but it's like detail work yeah. and stuff like that for them i did the horn buttons and uh caps for him for i think i worked on two or three different tuckers i think the one was not original, but I'm pretty sure I touched two other original ones. It's crazy. So yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness. And it was funny, the one I was working on, I had to do some something in the interior of it. Mm -hmm. And it was about to go to Pebble Beach with like to be in front with all the all the tuckers there. And uh I got to it was getting upholstered. So I go there, people are like thrashing on it, mm -hmm. and I have to get in the car with red paint and it's got like this light beige color interior and there's a guy in the cabin with me rolling around like putting the rest <laughs> of the interior and i'm New like stress. you know rocking with the boat i'm just like okay this is happening you know i'm like don't spill the red paint so that was that was fun yeah wow yeah that's cool is there any drag cars you've done or anything or race cars that are pretty well known or that were um, um or even interesting you know uh i don't well it's not a drag car See, I do so much that I forget. And I have uh, a horrible memory to begin with. I, I mean, like, on the point. I live, on the... I, I mean, I huff paint for a living. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, 
so I've painted like a recreation of like a Tucker, like not a Tucker, um, the Hudson Hornets. Okay. I've done two of those actually. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So not just one, but two. And then I just did a drag car that is turning out to be really popular in Maryland. Like I posted, it was, it's called the fool. It's a 64 two door Cheval wagon. Mm -hmm. And the guy like found it in the weeds basically and restored it. And I just did all, I just did all the lettering on it. And, um, I have, I posted it online and people from Maryland are like, I grew up with that car. I loved watching oh, that no car kidding. race. So that's really cool. I'm pretty sure there's other things that I'm forgetting right now, but that's awesome. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I know it's hard. I always do that. I put everybody on the on the spot. I'm terrible with yeah. it too, so I don't know why I do it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, is there? Do you have any jobs that you've done over the years that were like, as far as time consuming? Like, I thought this was a lot, but like you're talking about oh, stuff that took nothing. a yeah, like yeah, the that train car you the talked about. Trolley car was very time consuming. Um, I've done fire trucks that are very time consuming. And uh, I did a train car last year, and I think I did that in two days. Maybe I did that in two and a half days. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, like it's, you know, the slats really slowed me down. I would have had that probably done in a day if there weren't slats involved. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, I try to work as efficiently as I can. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, some job I feel like I'm super slow because... There's people that like can do all of this in a day, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't do that. But um, yeah, that's yeah. that's cool. Now, do you um, do you have any pinstripers that, or I should say, artists? I'm not even gonna say pinstripers mm -hmm. that are as far as influence your work now, or even in your early days. Is there any kind of artists that you could think of, whether pinstripers, oh. tattoo artists, anything? That Absolutely. Um, I love the art, so it's very easy to find people to appreciate in the art form. I remember the first time I saw um, a David Hightower piece. He's a pinstriper, and I could not get home fast enough to paint. I was so inspired. It wasn't like I wanted to recreate one of his pieces. I was just like, I have to paint. Like, that was so, so inspirational. I have to go home and paint. So he's, he's a major one. I love Willis Dormer's work. He's another pinstriper. He uses a lot of negative space, which is kind of funny because... David High Hightower doesn't like mm. he his work is very very busy which my work is too but then you have Willis Dormer who it, his striping is so elegant and negative space so like I try to think of both of that you know as I'm working and uh, use neg negative space to my advantage in some pieces and um, so those two are are huge and um, Alan Johnson, he's from New Jersey. So growing up, I mean, in New Jersey, we had so many amazing artists in that state that growing up looking at pinstriping, it was pretty much easy to figure out like what looked good and what looks bad. Mm -hmm. So when I started out, I'm like, I know my stuff needs to look like this, not that, you know? <laughs> um, so he's definitely, and he's just more than a pinstriper. He's a lettering artist, he's a gilder. He's a he's a fine artist, you know, like he ran the gambit of mm. art. So, yeah, I really appreciate his work, too. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So how did you learn the um, with the the gold leafing? Mm -hmm. How did you was that something like I feel like before you there wasn't like there was YouTube videos. Like no. how did you pick up or learn or um, doing the, the gold leafing? A lot of trial and error with gold leaf. Um, I learned slowly. This is back when like people still used well, before YouTube, there was a lot of forms. Yep. And even before social media, there was forms. Mm -hmm. So back in like 2002 and 2003, there was these old forms that people were talking on. Like for the first time, you know, this is before Facebook and MySpace, yep. basically. Yep. So people were sharing information like the ham yep. on these forms. And when I found them, they were shut down. Like you couldn't become a member and communicate uh, anymore, but they were still there, They're like archived. And I'm like a deep sea diver on the internet. <laughs> and I found them and I read and read and read so much. And it was reading and then experiment, reading and then experiment because I didn't have books. I didn't have YouTube. I didn't have anyone near me that gold leafed. Mm. So it was a lot, you know, reading and doing this. And it's like, well, that didn't work. What did I do wrong? Let mm -hmm. me try this. So it was a lot of experimenting. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I had assumed that maybe there was someone that you had kind of no. watched or studied under. That's. I wish I would have. 
take it, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, it would be quicker. Yeah, because this isn't cheap, right? No, it's not. And um, I, I always say to people, I'm like, I know it's expensive, and I know people don't have a lot of finances to just throw out something just to experiment with mm -hmm. but it is crucial to learn you know there you're going to learn more from your failures than your successes i believe right. with gold leaf and it's very humbling once you think you got it you don't you know <laughs> um i'm very fortunate in the last few years to become friend with a gilder who does a lot of fire engines mm. so he's been very very good to bounce new products with off of and um, different techniques. It's like, all right, well, I have three cars to do on this truck. You know, I should start off with this one and do this. And he's like, yeah, you know, you just have to do it that way, which is time consuming. You know, you have to do them in each step, not mm. just throw all the size down and then try to place the, you know, 12 carat next to the 16 carat next to the, you know, 23. I'm like, all right, gotta slow my roll down and do it the slow way. But yeah, he's been great. Oh, with that's that. cool. Yeah. The, um, so for people that aren't familiar, which I wasn't until the, yesterday you educated mm -hmm. me, the, the actual gold leaf material, mm -hmm. what's the process or what is it? And, um, and also you were talking about how rare it is, to, how hard it is to find nowadays. Yeah. So first you would have to throw down the gold size, which is a glue. It's a clear, almost like varnish mm -hmm. in a way. And I always tint it so I see where I'm going. So you throw down the size and then you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait until it is ready. And people always ask me, well, you know, how long do I wait? And I'm like, as long as it takes, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I showed you, yet, you know, yesterday, yeah, the testers. I saw it was just like you were painting and you go over and touch it and paint yeah. and you're like, okay, it's, it's ready. It's, it's not ready. It's <laughs> ready, you know. And um, so that step goes first and then you wait until it's ready. And when it's ready, then I apply the gold leaf, which is I use 23 karat. Well, I use patent gold leaf. I use genuine leaf. I don't use uh, imitation leaf, which a lot of people are using now. And it's kind of like almost the same, but not the same. Mm -hmm. um, there's things that you can't just translate to either or. So anyway, I use the genuine leaf, patent leaf. I apply that. And then after everything's applied, then I remove all the excess gold. Mm -hmm. Anything that's not stuck down to the gold size will come off and there's some gold floating around your shop and now. It's real gold. That's it's the real thing. gold. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's funny when I was like, move the fans away from me, you know, yeah. like I don't want the fans blowing on it. And um, so there's a lot of things. The, and also if it's dusty, like I've done work in body shops and they're like sanding. I'm like crud. And that's you know? going in that glue, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. yeah. So you got it. I got to be aware of all my surroundings and on that aspect. So then I lay the leaf and then I, um, I, engine turn it or burnish it. Um, there's different ways you can go about it. Like this is directional burnishing and so is this. And then these are just engine turned. Mm -hmm. So you do that and then I, I like waiting 24 hours to put a urethane clear over it. And that's only because the glue is oil-based and then the clear is urethane. Mm -hmm. And they're two separate type chemicals. So I usually let it wait, you know, 24 hours before I clear it. Hmm. Yeah. So that's the process. That's cool. Yeah. And it's, you can only get it, you were saying there's like one place in the States you can get it? Yeah. So you can get it in various places in the United States, but there's only one manufacturer. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And um, that's W&B Gold Leaf. You can Google them if you want. And uh, so they're the last uh, manufacturer in the United States that makes it. But they also sell other brands of leaf. There's brands from Germany and China and, you know, all over that make it. But uh, they're the ones in the U.S. that still make it. So I support them. Wow. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, so that's not something you can just like, oh, crap, I'm out of one sheet. No. I'm down to my last sheet. Let me call. No, like I have, I have to call them up and order it. And they're really speedy on delivery. I usually get my stuff in two days, which is amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're awesome. And then uh, the imitation leaf is more accessible. You can go into like craft stores and mm -hmm. buy, you know, them there, like silver or gold or, you know, um, but the manufacturer, WB, they also sell the imitation leaf mm -hmm. for, from other brands. They sell through them too. Can you practice like with the imitation stuff just to get the process down or is kinda, it so different? Sorta, it's kind of different. Like, so uh, I started with imitation and variegated leaf and um, it's a thicker material. 
So you need the glue to be more tacky. So you have to apply it sooner than you would genuine leaf. Genuine leaf, you almost need the glue to be almost dry. Mm. It's amazing what the genuine, because it's super thin. It's so thin. And then with the imitation leaf, uh, because it's thicker, you wait like less time to put it on, but then you also need something a bit more abrasive to manipulate it for burnishing. Hmm. Like I can't take my velvet and engine turn it. It's not going to go anywhere. Oh. Yeah. So like those are the things that a lot of beginners like run into and they're like, why isn't this engine turning? Well, you know, you got to think about the materials that you're using hmm. first. So I use uh, basically sandpaper to engine turn that and that's, crazy to think about that i would never use that on genuine yeah. gold ever yeah that's so, crazy yeah. well that's yeah that's why it's such a lost art i think mm -hmm. there's so many steps you can't just no you can't you, you can't, can't wing half, it you can't half-ass it no <laughs> you can't <laughs> so what made you start um doing some of the um like we talked about the the drawing the um the animals and things mm -hmm. the christmas balls that's like we were yeah. talking about it today and i like blew my mind how much how much interest there is what yeah. we just one day decided to do christmas balls or it was, it was like basically when i first started striping you know i was oh. like i love ornaments and i love christmas i'm like a big christmas geek christmas geek so like you know it's a good thing to practice on you know it's a round tight round yeah. surface you know i'm like if i can pinstripe on a tight round surface like this is easy peasy mm -hmm. and um so i did them for a while way back in the day and they sold really good and then like i took a break and then I started doing them a little bit again, and Hemmings Magazine picked them up, and they did an article on them, and it was like crazy town <laughs> after it. that. And then, um, and I used to take custom orders for them, and that got a little bit too intense, and I was like, I'm done. You know, people were like, I put in like a two week time span, yeah. like these will be ready in two weeks for you. Like I had some smart ass like call me the next day, are they done yet? And he kept doing that, and I'm like you are the reason why I want to stop this. You know, yeah. I'm like, you need to chill out. Like he was joking, but you're taking my time up, you know, like and it's I, just a little stressful. Yeah. Right? And it's stressful. So I was like, whatever. So I like stopped for about four or five years. And it was crazy. Cause like every year people were ordering over and over again because they're like every year is different of course. Mm -hmm. And they wanted, you know, it was like a tradition for them. Right. So when I stopped, I, I would get emails year round for them Holy and I was like oh my goodness so then two years ago I finally decided I'm gonna do it again but it's gonna be on my terms I'm just gonna paint what I want whatever colors and however many I paint I'll just throw on my website and sell them like that like no orders no pressure and they crashed my website <laughs> <laughs> it was like one minute in and it was down and it was down for the rest of the day oh my god people were crazy so then I was like all right like I'm not a web person and I'm not smart like that so I had a web person move everything to like a bigger server and they're like this is not gonna happen again well then last year happened I did 160 ornaments and I went live with it it was before I went live the site crashed because everyone was waiting just online sitting just sitting online oh my god so and we got it back through like the middle of the day and they sold out in one day and i only had 160 ornaments but um on the back end of the the website i was able to see how many people were trying to get mm -hmm. on the website that hour like eighteen thousand people that's it's ridiculous for christmas ornaments you know like i'm like wow i mean yeah. i love christmas i'm mean, like that's really cool but people are like oh i can't wait to get one next year and people are still trying like they're trying to like place an order and i was like no. no 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 like you gotta you gotta wait and it's crazy yeah mike Put that note down. We need to do something Christmas related. <laughs> <laughs> People love Christmas. Write that yeah. down. Good idea. <laughs> That's yeah. so cool. Is there a, um, this is kind of like my, usually my last question for people. It might be, again, putting you on the spot. Nor we call it a North Star item. So for you, mm. it would be like North Star as far as something to paint mm. or doesn't that stripe, paint, letter. Is there something that would just be so cool to do for you? You know, again, whether it's sentimental or it's just massive or it's like you've done just about everything, yeah. but this is going to sound really girly. No. I want to do a carousel horse. Oh, that's super yeah, cool. It is, like I've been wanting to do a carousel horse for years. Um, it incorporates 
almost every facet of what I do. It inco- sometimes it incorporates lettering, incorporates gold leaf, and incorporates mm-hmm. airbrushing, uh, striping, like all in one little package. I mean, they're not really little, but right. yeah. And I love horses, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I actually would have thought that you would have done one by done, now. Done, done. And- yeah, and like we have a lot of carousels in like the tri-state area. Like there's some really cool ones in Pennsylvania at one mm-hmm. of the malls. Um, Knoebels has a museum, yep. you know, and uh, Hershey's got some, and uh, Ocean City, Maryland's got some. Oh, wow. So it's it's pretty neat. But, gotta get uh, gotta get in the uh, yeah. I gotta get I gotta circle. find that circle. Yeah, so somebody, put, if you're yeah. watching this, carousel they horse. horse on the pick, well, they they yeah. did one in Pot. They have a carousel in Potsdam yeah. they restored. I don't oh, know I why didn't they, even know that. Why didn't they contact you? We have to yell at them yeah. about that. I gotta put the word out. Yeah. Send me your horses. <laughs> Send me your <laughs> carousel horses. Yeah. Well, maybe or, or, or the live ones. You know. <laughs> I'll take them all. I'll okay. take them. <laughs> so for um, social media, waited for people to get a hold of you. You have a YouTube. I feel mm-hmm. like it's like an untapped resource yeah. that you do. So, are you planning on doing some more YouTube as far as um, showing the process or instructing yeah. or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. Like if this past year has been hectic, I was building a garage and you know all this other stuff going on. So now that I have like a dedicated space, mm-hmm. it'll be a lot easier to actually sit down and get things out and also edit, and, yeah. um, which is huge and mm-hmm. all that stuff. But yeah, it's been kind of dormant. I'm sorry, my YouTube people, <laughs> and they've been messaging me like, are you okay? I'm like, yes, I'm okay. Yeah. Um, which is great, but yeah, I have to get back in on it. That's cool. So how, what's the YouTube channel for any, is it Hot Rod? I think it's just Hot Rod Gen or it's Hot Rod Gen Pinstriping. I couldn't remember if there was yeah. an extra. Yeah, I forget. Yeah. We'll but, put it, we'll put it in there, but. Yeah. If you def- just look up Hot Rod Gen, like they pop up and uh, yeah. so I'm on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram under Hot Rod Gen. And the Facebook's been like, you've been doing reels, it's yeah. been like blowing up. It's bonkers, you know, I have a lot of followers there and it's wonderful and um, I like, I like Facebook. I like, basically my whole social media stuff started with Facebook, mm-hmm. so I, I I dedicate a lot more time on there than the other ones. But that's where, uh, for people that are interested in seeing more mm-hmm. content, yeah, you probably have a lot of it, yeah, even more so there. Yeah, very cool. Well, definitely go to Jen's page on all of her pages, but specifically YouTube because it'll give her a kick in the butt because I want to watch yeah. more content. <laughs> <laughs> so if she sees a growth yeah. in and subscribers, she'll she'll be guilted into doing yeah. it's some all, stuff. It's all Matt's fault. Yeah, it is my fault. <laughs> so, well, thank you, Jen. I appreciate it. I really do appreciate the time that you spent with us. It's Thanks for cool. having me. Of course. It's been fun. So, can't wait to get this truck out and for people to see it. I'm so psyched. Yeah, awesome. me too. It'll be so, exciting to see out. I'll send the rain at Hershey. Be... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you, guys.